Hey, hi, I'm glad you're joining me again. This is Biology 4.5 Human Fertilization. We're going to have a lesson about this and it starts on page 98 in your textbook. So let's dive in. First of all, here's a picture of an egg cell. And you can also see a picture of a sperm cell at a comparable size. And you can see that the sperm cell is way, way smaller. The size of that sperm cell has a reason. The only job it has is to bring DNA, hereditary information, which it's carrying in its head right here inside in a nucleus. It needs to carry that to the egg cell. For that, it needs to be fast. But it needs energy and it needs food and nutrients, but that is not inside the sperm cell. It's in the surrounding fluid that it swims in. And that fluid it gets from the uh, prostate gland and the seminal vesicles and all that. So that's its job. The egg cell, however, has a totally different function. It has to grow an embryo upon fertilization. And what is an embryo? It's a fertilized egg cell. And when the fertilized egg cell is inside an oviduct where fertilization takes place, it has to travel to the uterus. And in the uterus, it will find food and shelter for nine months where it can grow into a baby. Remember, the endometrium provides the food inside the uterus for this growing embryo. But the traveling from the oviduct to the uterus takes several days and the egg cell doesn't sit idle and just gets itself transported by cilia cells to that uterus. It already starts building a baby. It already starts dividing into two cells, into four cells, into eight cells and so forth. And for that it needs energy and that is what this egg cell is all about. It provides the nutrients for that journey until it implants into the uterus where it can then live for nine months. So that's why that egg cell needs to be big for all of this nutrients and food for that growing bunch of cells that will involve, evolve into a baby. It's all about winning the race for the sperm cell. Remember the sperm cells, they're with millions. And Unfortunately for them, only a few hundred will reach that egg cell. And there's all kinds of reasons for it. Because first of all, the vagina is not a very safe environment for a sperm cell. Because sperm cells do not belong to the female body. So the female body will use its immune system to attack the foreign sperm cells. So a lot of them die. Also, a lot of sperm cells are not even completely healthy themselves, and so they will not ever make it to the egg cell. Swimming all the way through the vagina, through the uterus, and then you have to take a left turn or a right turn for the two oviducts. And only in one of them will be the egg cell waiting. So if you and a bunch of your sperm cell friends go to the wrong oviduct, you will never meet an egg cell. You will not win that race. So in the end, a bunch of sperm cells make it into the correct oviduct, and then they have to see who is going to enter that egg cell. And you can see the whole procedure of entering an egg cell in this picture. We'll talk about that in a minute. Now remember, only the fastest and strongest sperm cells will succeed in fertilizing an egg cell. So that means you and I and all of humanity, we are all the result of the winning sperm cell entering that egg cell. So we're basically all winners. Okay, there's one really important point that you need to remember. An egg cell can only be fertilized by one sperm cell. Even if we're talking about twins or triplets or whatever. One sperm cell for an egg cell, always. Now, how do twins get made? Well, we'll talk about that. 
But remember this rule. This is a really important rule. Fertilization, the topic of this lesson, is all about the moment when hereditary information from the male and the female are combined together. So let's talk about this whole thing in a summary while I'll explain this picture. Okay, so here you can see the egg cell, and this white area is actually the cell membrane of the egg cell. These two outer layers, the blue layer and all of these little things around these little cells, are what we call the outer layer of the egg cell. And a sperm cell needs to dive and burrow into those two layers, as you can see in pictures one and two, in order to be able to go to stage three, which is going through the cell membrane and inside the cell. Now this is actually all the same sperm cell, but in different moments. So step one, burrowing in the outer layer of the egg. Step two, burrowing, diving, digging yourself into the inner layer. And then step three, breaking through the egg cell membrane. Here you can see that the sperm cell, once it has broken through the membrane, it will release its nucleus. Everything else, its head, its tail, will remain outside. At this moment, something special happens, because this outer layer of the egg will now toughen up and harden, and so nobody, no sperm cell can get in. And this is exactly how we always manage just one sperm cell fertilizing an egg cell. So the first sperm cell that gets this job done makes sort of a chemical reaction happen on the outer layer of the egg cell whereby the egg cell just hardens up and no one else can get in. So here you can see the nucleus of the sperm cell, the winning sperm cell. And this is the gigantic nucleus of the egg cell. And those two nuclei, those two pieces of yeah, well, they're DNA containers, you might say, DNA from the father, DNA from the mother, they fuse together. Here you can see that. Here's just a little bit of that nucleus from the father, from the sperm cell, still visible. And it fuses with the egg cell, and that is the moment of fertilization. From here on, we'll have a completely new and unique nucleus with a unique combination of DNA from father and mother. And so this egg will contain that one nucleus. So one nucleus and another nucleus fuse and make one whole new nucleus. Now that fertilized egg cell will then divide into a baby with its unique combination of DNA. Okay, here are two pictures of a fertilized egg cell. They're actual pictures from an electron microscopic photo. Which one of these is the fertilized egg? And I guess, I hope you guessed it, this is the one. Because here we still have two nuclei, the sperm cell nucleus and the egg cell nucleus, and they're fusing together until it is one nucleus. And that one nucleus is the fertilized egg cell nucleus. So fertilization is, again, the moment when hereditary information from male and female are combined together. So let's talk about this. Here is a sperm cell, and it has only half the number of chromosomes from a normal body cell. Now let me explain that. What is a chromosome? A chromosome is a package of DNA, and human beings in each of their cells have 46 of those chromosomes. But there's one exception sex cells. Sex cells have only half the number of chromosomes. So 23 chromosomes in the sperm cell and 23 chromosomes in the egg cell. 23 is half of 46. But once the two nuclei combine together, it's 23 chromosomes from father and 23 from mother, and so we again have the unique 46 chromosomes that make up a human being like you and me. And that full set of chromosomes is a unique combination of chromosomes 
from father and mother and that we call a fertilized egg cell and another word for fertilized egg cell you can see it over here is zygote so zygote is fertilized egg cell the moment when the head of the sperm cell has entered the egg cell the wall of the egg cell undergoes change no other sperm cells can enter so let's talk about this here we have inside the oviduct the egg waiting and here's the sperm cells the sperm cells travel up through one of the two oviducts and meet that egg cell they start surrounding the egg cell one of them comes in the outer layer of the egg cell hardens and that one sperm cell can then donate its nucleus and then fertilization happens once fertilization is happening okay that can you can see that here we call that day zero then here we have the zygote the fertilized egg cell and day two the egg cell divides into two cells the, and then we have the two cells divided into four cells and the four divided into eight and so forth and by the time it has arrived at the uterus it's already quite a mass of cells so we call that an embryo so here we have that one cell two cells four cells eight cells and so forth so those cells are copies of the original egg cell and so that means that all of your cells from your skin cells your eye cells your cheek cells your hair cells everything is copies from that original egg cell with its original nucleus and you have the same nucleus as copies in all of your other cells okay so that ball of cells is called an embryo now let's talk about twins there's two types of twins identical twins and fraternal twins een eigen and twee eigen tweelingen identical twins identical twins is this picture we have a zygote a fertilized egg cell and it divides okay but accidentally somewhere during that division when it is four or when it is eight or when it is 16 or when it is 32 somehow that clump of cells breaks off into two clumps of cells and since nothing is specialized yet there's no blood cells there's no bone cells there's no brain cells that doesn't really matter and so those two clumps of cells then separately develop into two babies but they have identical dna because they came from one egg cell so they're kind of like clones. Fraternal or twee eigen tweelingen, fraternal twins. Accidentally, two egg cells were ovulated during ovulation, and each egg cell was fertilized by its own sperm cell. So you get two developments of two separate babies, all totally separate developments from the start. So because it's two separate developments of two separate babies, they have each their own unique combination of dna and that means that the two babies will now develop into two different human beings that don't even have to look so much alike in fact they don't even have to be the same gender one could be a boy one could be a girl because being a boy or a girl it's also um, defined in your dna However, when you are identical twins, you're always either two boys or two girls because it came from that one divided, dividing nucleus, that one dividing egg cell. So basically, these two fraternal twins are just like regular siblings, regular brothers and sisters, only they haven't been born several years apart. They're born at the same time. Okay, that's the story for today, human fertilization. Go ahead, go to your workbook, page 115, and do your questions 20 to 28. You may skip question 25. And for question 26, please watch the video that I've sent you in Magister, uh, because that video is a very nice video about twins. Okay, enjoy your day, and we'll talk again. Bye!